I want to move to Bessemer. You mentioned Bessemer, Alabama. Uh, we've been covering this pretty extensively. We spoke with some of the people from the Bamazonians. Um, those are the Alabama-based Amazon workers and employees who have attempted to unionize. Their first effort in Bessemer failed. There is a revolt that's going to happen. And I want us to take a look at uh, this first clip. It's from November 30th, 2021, and it's discussing the U.S. Labor Board officials ordering Amazon um, ordering Amazon to redo the union vote at Alabama at the Alabama Bessemer Warehouse. Let's take a look at that. A regional director for the U.S. National Labor Relations Board on Monday called for a rerun of a union election at an Amazon facility in Alabama, setting the stage for another high-profile organizing battle at the world's largest online retailer. Workers at the warehouse in Alabama rejected forming a union by a more than two to one margin in April after an organizing drive that garnered support from U.S. lawmakers and President Joe Biden. In August, an NLRB hearing officer said the company's conduct around the previous vote had interfered with the election. In a statement, Stuart Applebaum, president of the retail wholesale and department store union, said, quote, Today's decision confirms what we were saying all along, that Amazon's intimidation and interference prevented workers from having a fair say in whether they wanted a union in their workplace. In Monday's decision, the NLRB regional director said that Amazon engaged in objectionable conduct that warrants setting aside the election. The decision pointed to moves by the company encouraging staff to vote via a mailbox it had the Postal Service install at its warehouse, surrounding the mailbox with its campaign slogan and locating it where workers may have thought Amazon was monitoring them. The decision for a redo adds pressure on Amazon, which has recently faced union campaigns in New York and Canada. Worker groups view organizing the company as a landmark goal that would invigorate the U.S. labor movement. An Amazon spokesperson said that the company's employees overwhelmingly voted against joining the union this year, adding that it is disappointing that the NLRB has now decided those votes shouldn't count. Hmm. Uh, no, Miki, you followed it. You covered it. I followed it. We all were paying attention to what was happening in Bess Bessemer, Alabama. One thing we know for sure was that Amazon did everything it could to prevent uh, the successful unionization there. What are your thoughts about the second vote that's coming up? Well, I, I hope that um, RWDSU is really going to uh, take the lessons that they've learned from not just this effort, but previous efforts. I, you know, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, partly because, you know, some of the reporting from great reporters like Kim Kelly, who was on the ground out there, uh, you know, interviewing folks to other labor leaders who said, you know, it was it was questionable that they chose Bessemer, um, mm. which is important. Obviously, people of Bessemer want to unionize and there is a union history in Bessemer, but it's a right to work state. While That's right. there's Staten Island, where Stuart Applebaum and RWDSU has a very strong presence in New York City, um, it, it, and it's a union state. Some folks said it might have been easier uh, to do this to start in a place long in, in Staten Island where, you know, tons of people have gotten attention. Chris Smalls, of course, was fired, uh, went straight to management in terms of memos about Chris Smalls as he was as he was calling out um, how they were protecting workers during the lockdown, specifically during the lockdown. Right. So, you know, I think I, I'm glad that they're doing it again. And, and I hope that there are lessons um, that were learned and, you know, Maybe this is also to uh, give good face to RWDSU, who, who seemed to mishandle um, the last mm. union effort. So I'm not and, sure. And, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure. Ground, so I can't say. And for the audience, the R RWDSU is the retail worker wholesale and department store union. That's in Bir Birmingham, Alabama. That's the union that was organizing there in Bessemer, correct? Right. And, and you know, okay. and to make it also clear, there are other unions who it, it's from what I understand, when a, a location, specifically Amazon, wants to unionize, they look around and see which unions are strong in that area, that mm -hmm. complement. So it's not always that RWDSU is the union associated with Amazon. You have the Teamsters doing a massive union effort um, in Amazon facilities around the country right now. They've decided to lean in on this. So it really depends on, on the location, you know, which unions are strong. And again, that goes back to, oh, hey, Republicans have decided, and Democrats, of course, are part of this, but Republicans have completely annihilated uh, unions by taking over state legislatures, creating right-to-work states. That's right you know, That's Koch right. brother funded efforts. That's right. Alec, 
um, Koch brothers. It has been a concerted effort um, to make this country unpalatable for labor. I want to play this next clip. This next clip is a clip from um, last year when I was able to speak with several Amazon truck drivers. And uh, based on the story about the urine bottles, Okay. All right. So we won't go to that just yet. But this is the part that I, I really want to focus on is the fact that these are these are real people. No, Mickey, I think I think some of us, we sever our solidarity based on how much we need that product to get to us the next day. Right. Mm -hmm. How much we need that that widget to get from Amazon. And then there's a lot of people who really just cut it off and say, well, that's too bad because I really need that TV uh, delivered Amazon Prime the next day. What are your thoughts in terms of the culpability of us as consumers to what the workers are going through? You know, I think this is a complicated thing for for folks on the left, because um, in some situations, boycotting an industry can make a huge difference. The problem with places like Walmart and Amazon is that they have eaten up all, almost all small business, especially in rural communities. And especially when you're in a lockdown that, um, you know, you almost have no choice. It's, it's like when, you know, folks say, well, boycott this, boycott that. It's like, well, where does that end in the society that we live in? You know, we all have mm -hmm. iPhones. We are all carrying around, you know, uh, uh, precious metals that, we're on, you know, probably in a very inhumane way, mind and also affect, you know, geopolitical situations, et cetera. So we're all part of this in some way or form. And we're not even aware of 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 how mm. this, you know, every single piece component um, in the supply chain, you know, is the human the, the humanity um, connected to it. So with that being said, I I think that, you know, if you can go to small businesses, please do. But mm. I don't feel personally, this is my take, I don't feel like we should be um, making people feel guilty for taking part in a system that is very hard to escape. This is why, mm -hmm. you know, it's not about individualism. It's about having real oversight. It's about having a government that holds these companies accountable. I mean, when Walmart mm. swooped into all these towns and I grew up in one of these small towns, there used to be a vibrant little main street where all the little shops, my dad would yep. tell me these stories about growing up there and went to the five and dine shop, did the five and dine, yep. you know, none of them were open anymore when Walmart came in. And then now Walmart is, well, they're, they're still it's perfectly the only fine. Game but in town. Yeah. Exactly. Now, Amazon is that. And of course, Amazon um, does so much more damage because of the supply chain, you know, environmental consequences of shipping things around. Um, and of yeah. course, how they treat their workers. So, you know, this is why it's important not just to have unions, but simultaneously, we, we can't sit here and think that it, all of this is dependent on unions. We have to look, especially if you live right. in, a, in a blue state. That's it. What are our lawmakers doing? I mean, there are plenty of things in places like New York State and, and California, and they have been doing little things here and there that they could be doing to crack down on how how workers are being treated. They're breaking the law. Let's be very clear. This isn't about union rights at this point. What they did to Chris Smalls, what they did to so many other people, That's they right. broke the labor law and they broke actual laws and they're not mm -hmm. being held accountable. 